so welcome back for what we hope is the third instalment. Um, we say hope. I'm hoping you guys are on your third drink by now. Um, we've tried these one by one. This is the uh, Brew York Freaky Franchise birthday beers. This is Ghost Dimension with our friends Fierce and Aberdeen. So this time we've made um, a Mexican Merle Imperial Milk Stout. So a Mexican Merle is a traditional uh, Mexican sauce that they use in many different ways and it Everybody has the kind of own take on Mexican mole, but the things most commonly used in it are like cacao powder, cumin, cinnamon, uh, allspice, um, raisins, and of course chilies that provide the heat. And when we were first coming up with the concept for this, uh, we were going to do a three chili combo of ancho, mulatto, and chili. Um, they're all kind of low to medium heat but they offer great flavour and you, some of them at least you use in a smoked manner so then you're getting uh, different flavour imparted with that as well. But this beer was originally going to be called Inferno but then when we did our research we realised that um, uh, Oakham, Oakham, Oakham yeah. already do a beer called Inferno so we didn't want to tread on their toes so we had to find another fifth film in a horror series that would fit with this. Um, so then we went with Ghost Dimension, which is the paranormal one. Yeah. Um, and then I thought, well, if it's called the Ghost Dimension, we need to introduce the Ghost Chili, the Naga Chili into it. So we ended up going with four chilies, uh, and that still wasn't quite enough in terms of the heat, even though the Naga Chili is the stupidly hot one. It's the one where you see Adam Richman on Man vs. Food. Uh, the people preparing his food are wearing gloves and gas masks, and then he has to just munch it down with the ghost chilies in it. Uh, but that didn't impart enough um, heat into the beer. More heat. It, um, it had the kind of mole character flavour-wise that we wanted, but it didn't have that kick. So we then sourced this one and a half million Scoville chilli extract, which myself and Roddy, our production manager, then injected into the finished beer to boost that level of heat. And then Roddy then got me a taste afterwards but he did it using the same lines that we just injected the one and a half million scoville through. So that the second I put it to my lips, my lips just went, <laughs> and I had to run to the kitchen and get milk. I think he was trying to kill me. It, yeah, it's um, it, it, heat in beer is an interesting one, so chilli and spice, because um, everyone's got their own opinion. Everyone knows what they like, and um, you can't please everyone. But we wanted to brew a beer that had a nice residual heat that's, that's really warming and uh, enjoyable, but it's going to make you want another drink of. Um, I've had some beers in the past which are just too much, um, too too hot, and you just don't enjoy it, so you don't drink it. And then I've had others that you can't even taste the chili. So we wanted to try and get the balance right. So hopefully you enjoy this and you think that we've got a, a nice balance of heat with flavour. And, and, and well, for me, I think we have, and I think the different flavours are coming through. I think even more so now than when I last had this, the the, the cacao, the chocolate's really coming through in this yeah. now. Um, and and I do love the kind of it's um, almost like a vicious cycle of. You have a sip, the heat eventually builds, and you're like, well, I need another sip. Mm. But then you're just constantly repeating that cycle. Yeah, no, it's um, of the... I haven't drank every single one of our beers. I've tasted them all in tank before we packaged them. And of the five, this is one of my favourites at the um, in the tank stage. And um, I just find it really enjoyable and moorish. It's not... You can't tell it's 13%, because I don't think we mentioned that. It's a 13% ABV style. Mm. And the um, sweetness from the chocolate in there and the... Um, what else is there? It's well, there's lots of lactose, surprisingly enough. So that's where the um, oh, sweetness... Cinnamon, um, cinnamon um, that gives heat and the, the bit of a spice kick at the end. Uh, um, so I, I made the spice mix for this particular beer. Uh, and I bought a brand new food processor to do it. Um, and I had something like a 120 litre drum and it was full about two thirds full of the spices by the time I finished and I did it in the staff kitchen at work and I had gloves and a gas mask on while I was doing this and it was getting really quite intense and everybody else was just walking into the kitchen going <laughs> and then just had to turn around and walk straight out. That wasn't a Covid cough that they were doing, they were doing a chilli cough. <laughs> But yeah, I, I was quite chesty for a day or two after preparing all of these ingredients. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Um, the thing is, um, we, we're brewing on a big scale now, so um, our, our um, production facilities, um, yeah, it's, it, it's 5,000 litres at a time. So um, we were brewing um, big batches of big Imperial beers, and we needed a lot of 
flavour to go with that. So this batch of chilli or chipotle that um, the guys made, mole, sorry, um, <coughs> um, was was a big volume we needed to get any any sort of heat in there. And even still, I think if we hadn't have done the Scoville boost, that would have been too subtle. I don't think we'd have you'd, people have enjoyed it as much. But I think it works really well. Hopefully, you guys enjoy that taste. Yeah, I think we've got the the level right. And uh, we bought five bottles of this extract. And Roddy was like, well, 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 Roddy and I, we were like, well, we'll just put one in and see where we are. We'll probably need to add some more. We put one in and we're like, I think we need to stop. Yeah. I think that's enough. Don't go too fast. We've never done that in the past, with like salty beers or anything. So. <laughs> uh, <coughs> oh, you'll thank you for that one. Um, so um, so when, when it came to choosing the breweries we worked with for our fifth birthday, um, a brewery sprung to mind straight away mainly because um, they're kind of like our best friends in brewing, but also because they also um, started their journey pretty much exactly the same time as us. In, um, in April 16, uh, Fierce from up in Aberdeen started brewing, and that's when we started brewing. So it seemed a bit of a no-brainer to try and do something together for, to celebrate their birthday as well, celebrate ours. So um, yeah, it's a big shame that we couldn't do it in person like we normally would have, and um, we've got the follow-up um, brewing person to sort out. But um, yeah, we, we came up with the idea with these guys, and um, yeah, we, we, th we think that it's something that we'd have, we'd have liked to brew. Uh, and likewise, they did a, a set of birthday beers, and we were one of the breweries privileged to be able to collaborate with them. And uh, they were a little bit more punctual than we were. They managed to get their beers out for their birthday, but because of the issues we've had with uh, getting the labelling machine into the country, that has not been possible for us. No, hopefully um, you guys can appreciate um, you, you don't hate us too much for delaying the getting these beers out. We need to get obviously the labels on them for one. Um, but we really appreciate all the support everyone's given us and, um, and all the pre-orders we got for these beers. We've got a um, crazy busy week this week getting all those beers picked, packed and shipped. Um, but you guys should have all those beers in time for our live tasting next week. I, I quite like back. it when these weeks come out because my job's done. I've made yeah. the beer, I've had it packaged. Hospital pass. It's <laughs> someone else's problem to get out of the door now. Yeah, so, so normally um, we, we, we'd, have, we'd have probably picked most of these orders by now, but because of the um, issue with the labelling machine, the beer lands with us at 5pm tomorrow evening, at which point we're going to start some of the packing and then finish it the, over the coming days, and it happens to coincide with our monthly subscription box, so that's going to keep us on our toes well and truly for the rest of the week. I mean, why not do your two biggest events of the month in one go? <laughs> We well, just dealt with them. Well, on the plus side, the um, parcel company's lined up, ready to uh, come and collect a lot of parcels off us over the coming days. Okay, so we've got some more questions to do. Before we do that, we won't do what we did with the last beer, which is forget to tell you about the barrels that we're urging this in, because I think we've got quite a good concept with this one. So we've made a Mexican beer with a Scottish brewery. So we are taking Spurside whiskey barrels, because uh, Aberdeenshire is the Spurside area. Uh, and we're taking some tequila barrels, so we're taking three of each. And this is where you, you were saying someone had suggested to us blending the two. And I think we'll probably do that on a small scale just yeah. for our own benefit. Maybe from but one can to the other. I think that might be a little bit funky. So I think we'll be doing two releases with this one. You'll be able to get tequila, tequila, that tequila, tequila, tequila. You make, <laughs> make me you happy. happy. <laughs> You'll be able to get a tequila, you make me happy, Barlow's version, and you'll be able to get a Spurside whiskey, Barlow's version, about a year from now. Yeah. Or maybe a month after that, if we're running late again. And a special peaty tequila version <clears throat> for people who like that. So we mentioned that the beer is called The Ghost Dimension, so this is the fifth beer in the Paranormal Activity um, franchise. So um, we had a couple of uh, other alternative names lined up and we kept finding that other breweries had already brewed beers with those names so we decided we'd go for something a bit more unique and the ghost i mentioned gave us the chance to use the uh, ghost chili that lee mentioned and um and also do something on the can uh, sorry, on the front on the artwork uh, to tie it all together so the concept on the front of this can is our heroine has now been chased into the uh, infamous cabin in the woods um, and now she is being controlled by the villain and they're about to have their big battle to determine who wins out of the villain and our heroine. 
Right. Um, and I think you can see the villain through the window on this one. On the uh, and she yeah. appears to be in some sort of trance with the paranormal activity going on around her. And then um, when we were talking about the concept, we came up with some stupid ideas of what to put on the can artwork. And one of them was the um, sombrero. And I said, we've got to get the sombrero on there somewhere. Well, so, is that above so, the fire <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, we, we, we sometimes um, push the, uh, our branding guys the limits. So United by Design, who we work with, a uh, York-based company, and we always put some wacky ideas out there. And they must come out of these meetings. Surprised we didn't have one of those holiday donkeys in the calendar as well. <laughs> <laughs> Should have done. So, um, so yeah, we managed to get quite a lot of it in there. Um, and we gave it a uh, three out of five on the chili rating. So I think it's, it's, it's nice, it's, it's there, it's, it's in the back of your throat. It's not too hot. I mean, that, yeah, that's def definitely down to personal interpretation. I'd say it's somewhere between a three and a four. I think a five would be one sip and you're probably not wanting to go back in. Yeah. Four, most people would go back in. I think three, yeah, maybe this, this is about a three level in that, yeah, you, you definitely feel the heat but it's not stomping you from wanting to drink the beer. No, exactly, it's just enjoyable here, mm. I think, personally. Um, so throughout this series, we've asked you guys to send us questions, uh, email your questions in, and we've got quite a few to answer, so we'll work through a few of them, and uh, if there's any questions you, you want to know more about and yet we haven't answered them, just send an email and we'll uh, hopefully respond to you. So they've gone easy on us here. So um, from Alan Radley, do you have any good food pairing ideas for each or even some of these beers? Well. What would you have with a Mexican mole, but chili or, or some guacamole chocolate. to cool it down a bit? I actually think <laughs> so, um, guacamole would be good. Um, I think a nice dark chocolate consumed along this, alongside this would be particularly pleasurable. Um, um, I've got a bit of a craving for a curry at the moment, but I don't think that's, I think that's just because I've got the heat there now. I just want some curry. Yeah, c curry I would tend to have more with um, <laughs> big flavoured IPAs, particularly bitter IPAs. Um, Interesting um, one to food pair with these churros. because they're, they're quite intense in their character. Um, I think some of them yeah. might go nice alongside ice cream. Well, yeah, but, but the, uh, well, oh God, uh, um, ice cream topper. Yeah, like a little really float on top going. of one of these. Um, uh, you've got me stumped there. Um, I think many of the things we've done in the past sit very nicely alongside food. I think these are so intensely flavoured that they would dominate almost everything that you would put with them. Eating's cheating. Um, when you've got an 11% beer. <laughs> although I, I should have thought of the obvious one. Dark beer, cheese, mm. can't go wrong with cheese. It's a, a different awesome. type of cheese with each and the bigger the, um, the bigger the beer in terms of intensity of flavour, the more intense the cheese it can stand up to. So that kind of heat alongside a blue cheese might be quite nice. Well, I would eat anything Mexican. I love the you can edit combinations of... Uh, <laughs> You said you can edit that, and just, just, just oh, I would eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, not far from the truth, apart from mushrooms and celery. Who decided on the ABV for each, and that's from Martin Wern. So, so we had the 11 to 15 percent in mind. We always wanted to step up one percent each each beer, and I think some we had a good shoe in, so we knew that we wanted that beer to be that strength. Some we just decided based on the flavour and the profiles we were going for. Yeah, we wanted to put the final chapter, the Emperor's Collab, at the top of the range because that was going to be a variant of Tonkoko and Tonkoko is the thing that we know we are known for. So that immediately got the 15% slot. Yeah, and then um, of, of the rest of the beers, it was kind of a um, look at what flavours we're, we're trying to brew, what, what type of profiles we're trying to bring out and decide on what strength would work, what would work better at what strength. So um, there wasn't that much science to it. We knew that it was 11 to 15%, but we didn't. Uh, and to, to be honest, I think most of these would work at any of these strengths. Once you're over 10%, there's not masses of difference between 11 and 15% in terms of mouthfeel, and um, you're most likely tasting the, and feeling the alcohol by this point. Mm -hmm. um, so we could have gone with uh, any, almost in any slot. It, it was more so around us having this concept of stepping up from 11 to 15 across a range of beers. Not particularly beer related, but I always enjoy the artwork and puns on names on your cans. Who does your artwork and does the same person do all of the artwork for your cans? And that's from Simon Sherwood. 
So I answered that in one of the questions earlier. Um, United by Design, they're a York-based design company. Uh, Owen um, looks after the, uh, us with the artwork for pretty much most of our beers. Every now and then, um, Ant and Nadia will step in from our own team and uh, come up with a, um, a, a simple design for us if we need one. But um, usually it's United by Design who, who do all the work for us. Question four, so how much opportunity is there for trial and error in a project like this? With small batches of each one made and then pr um, production scale up or did you go for <laughs> go into each with an idea in mind and then hope for the best and um, that's from tom carlisle so um tom uh, yeah it's a great suggestion um we don't do simple though um so yeah it would have been nice to have had the opportunity to do that but this has coincided with a pandemic an expansion a site move and commissioning of that new site um so we've had a hell of a lot of on our plate through this period and um I think if there's one thing that we have the most experience with it is the construction of stouts. So we may not have used all of these flavours in these combinations before, but most of these flavours, probably with the exception of the chilli, uh, we have worked before with before. So it, it was more around us using that experience to determine the right balance in the right combinations across that range. Yeah, and then um, taking the input from the other breweries and seeing what we can do in terms of flavours and um, how we can make that profile work for the beers we're trying to make. I guess the biggest trial and error we had was um, learning our new kit while brewing these beers. So we did actually have to put a whole batch of beer down the drain, which was immensely frustrating and disappointing, but at the same time, we needed to get the best product out there. So um, of the five beers we, we, we've got in front of us, we brewed six beers, and these were big beers in big batches. So it was... Um, expensive mistake but you've got to get the right product out to, to, to you guys so, so we don't want to um, put, put something out there that's not not worth worth our, putting our name on so hopefully you guys will agree it was worth worth it in the end so in conclusion i think this was the most difficult one to get the balance with um i hope we've managed to achieve it i think you're getting most of the different um spice characteristics mm. coming through as well as the heat and the chocolate um, flavour still. Definitely the chocolate and just for me the right level of sweetness to complement all of that. Yeah, I think it's worked really well. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed it as well and look out for the uh, tequila and the Speyside version in a year's time. Yeah, and we'll see you for beer four. Definitely not straight after this one.